I thought it'd be fun if we went through my anti-aging skincare that I have stockpiled in my closet right now. The closet is pretty messy. I'm trying to really clean it out. I have a ton of skincare items that I have honestly never used that have been expired for probably a few months. And I'm trying to sort of pare down on a lot of things. Everything's a mess right now because we have construction going on in the background, like in the bedroom and also like around the house. We are like packing, getting ready to go to Europe. I'm filming a ton of videos. So I thought, you know, I'm going to clean out my skincare. I need to get rid of some anti-aging skincare products, which I just honestly never use. And I thought it would be fun if you just joined me while I did so. Hi, I'm Brandon, an anti-aging enthusiast, just like you, bringing to you anti-aging research tips and vlogs every single week. If anti-aging topics are of interest to you, please consider subscribing down below. I would love to share this space with you. And also please hit that like button too if you like anti-aging skincare videos. I have several on this channel coming out every single Monday as well as as just throughout the week, sprinkled throughout the week. If you're into that, hit that like button down below too. It really helps out my channel and I appreciate it a lot. So when it comes to anti-aging, skincare is a must. Whether it's sun protection, sunscreen, retinol or tretinoin, moisturizers, serums, I have it all, baby. I have everything that is known to man. So I'm trying to really reduce things so I can have a more simplistic approach to my anti-aging efforts, my anti-aging skincare efforts. So let's just start with getting rid of some sunscreen, shall we? Sun protection is a must up to 80%, up to 90% of the visible signs of skin aging is associated with or attributable to UV, ultraviolet radiation, predominantly UVA. I have a lot of sunscreen. I'm almost out of breath carrying them all over here. Sunscreen is a must for me. I do it every single day, sometimes twice, three times a day, depending upon, you know, the situation if I'm outdoors and sweating it off or something like that. But let's just go ahead and get through these sunscreens because I really need to get rid of some of them because I'm just not using them. First and foremost is the UV physical. This is the SPF of 41. It's a mineral sunscreen. Sorry if you can't see that very well, but I really like this. I've been wearing this like ever since I started wearing sunscreen every single day consistently about six years ago or so, like 2018. This was like my first go-to because it was a mineral sunscreen and I really wanted to just like get those mineral filters. I like this. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to put this in the keep pile. <laughs> I'm going to have two piles here, like a keep pile and a get, and a get rid of pile. This one I wasn't super impressed by. This was like, I think like a French one. It's the Avene, what is this called? Avene Intense Protect. This is an SPF of 50. And I got this like on some European website. I can't remember which one, but this is a chemical sunscreen. And suppose, I know it's marketed as, you know, not having a white cast and it doesn't have a white cast. It has a yellow cast. You know, when I put this on my skin, it had a very yellowy look and it comes out kind of peachy. But like when you rub it onto your skin, it was very yellow. And I think some some other commenter on one of my videos when I talked about this sunscreen it said the same thing. It made me look like I had jaundice. It was like not a good look. But the benefit of this sunscreen, the Avene Intense Protect, is that it has a filter in here that's kind of revolutionary. It helps to protect against supposedly high intensity of visible light or in blue light. So this is, this mainly comes from the sun, but it also comes from our devices, our indoor lighting, our phones, our tablets, our computer screens, our televisions. And this has been shown in emerging data and it has been shown consistently across studies to when it hits the skin, unprotected skin, it can result in reactive oxygen species, some level of inflammation, as well as the induction of matrix metalloproteinases, which are enzymes in the skin that degrade collagen. So for anti-aging purposes, it's important, in my opinion, to try and protect your skin against blue light and visible light because we're exposed to indoor lighting all the time. That's how we move about. You know, we need a light, especially with our like computer screens in our technological world. We can't really get away from it. It is hot in this closet. Oh my gosh. Up until recently, we only really had like iron oxides in our tinted mineral sunscreens like this to protect against blue light and visible light. But you know, this just isn't, this just wasn't it for me. This Avene SPF 50, I just did not really care for it. Yeah, just it the the yellow cast. I, and I've had this since I lived in New York City, which is like three years ago. So I need to probably throw that out. There's actually not a lot. I last summer I used it for like my body and that worked okay. It's still it was still like very, very greasy though. It's like a greasy mess kind of and very yellow. But I think Dr. Dre turned me on to this. I will not be repurchasing that personally. I have the MD Solar Sciences Mineral SPF 50. This is just a pure mineral sunscreen. You probably 
Can you see that? I know it's kind of dark. Sorry about that. Let me see the lighting. I'm trying to figure out the lighting here. But yeah, so this is an SPF of 50. It's purely mineral, just zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, great for protecting against UVA, UVA1, UVA2, and UVB. I don't think there's like hardly anything in here anymore. So I'm just going to put this in the giveaway pile. It does leave a white cast on your face if you use this. So I usually put a tinted mineral sunscreen over it. Usually the MD Solar Sciences tinted mineral sunscreen, which I have right here, actually. There's still a little bit left in this one. So I'm going to save this one and I'll put this in the keep pile. But I forgot I had this actually. One time Amazon, I bought just one of these. It's like a 1.7 ounce tube. I bought one of these and Amazon sent me six. So I had a lot to really get through. All right, the very, very first sunscreen that I ever used like six years ago, it wasn't this like specific bottle, but it was this product. It's the it's the mineral fusion tinted or mineral fusion fusion non-tinted mineral sunscreen. And this is an SPF of 40. And I use this because I was so like hung up on really using natural products. There's not a lot of like laboratory based ingredients in here. There's a lot of essential oils. And I found that it did start breaking me out because it's just so oily, so greasy, but I'm keeping it around because I love the smell. It reminds me of a specific Oh my gosh. It reminds me, you know how smells trigger memories? Like the first time you smelled something, it triggers a menu. It, like you have, you develop a memory around it. And whenever you smell it in the future, this is what is happening. Like I, I bought this when I was visiting some, like a friend in like some other state and I bought this and it was fantastic. Like I was so happy that I found like a natural moisturizing sunscreen. I thought it made me look dewy and healthy and young, but you know, it does have a strong smell and that smell triggers a very lovely memory. So I wanna keep this just cause I wanna sniff it occasionally. Oh my gosh, I bought this the exact same time I bought that other mineral fusion sunscreen. And this also gives me those same memories. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Hold on, let me see if I can like do something with the lights here. Okay, I moved the lights so hopefully you can see like the products better, but eh, not really. But yeah, the Amavera, this is a transparent, it, it, it really isn't that transparent. It's actually, is this the tinted version? Yeah, it is the tinted version. So I would wear this around the same time. I can't even smell it. Let me see if I can get it out, but it's so thick. Oh my gosh, I don't even know if I can smell it anymore. I might have to buy a new tube just so I can smell it and sniff it. I'm, do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like you, those smells trigger something? Let's see, I'm gonna keep that. Oh, I smell it. It smells like summer. Gosh, you guys. Okay, let's see, what is this? Oh, the PCA, this is an SPF. This is a chemical based sunscreen. Well, it's a hybrid. It has zinc oxide, octanoxate and octocrylene, I think. Yeah, octocrylene really makes my like, if I get it in my eyes, I really cannot function. I start like crying, like tears come down, which is weird because my eye doctor says I don't make enough tears, but so I probably should just put like sunscreen on, chemical sunscreen on my eyes. I like this. It doesn't leave a significant cast because it is hybrid sunscreen. I think it makes my skin look great. I just don't buy, I just, I bought the, I got this as a gift for Christmas like three years ago and I don't know why I'm keeping the bottle. So I'm throwing that out. Let's see. Oh, I just got this. This is the Elta MD non-tinted. This is a mineral sunscreen with zinc oxide to the oxide. SPF of 40. And this is a facial sunscreen. It has some antioxidants in here. I really like the L2MD products. I have been, honestly, I've been just sort of doubling up on the, these two. Both of these are mineral sunscreens. This is obviously the tinted mineral sunscreen by L2MD, which I showed you just a minute ago. And this is the non-tinted version. And they're pretty close in SPF. So I use both of these sometimes. I'll put like the non-tinted, I'll put like a, a very thin layer of the non-tinted. And then on top, I will put the UV physical. I'm actually wearing the UV physical right now on my face and my neck too. You can probably see how like moisturizing it is. I also look probably kind of like dewy just because it is hot and heat in here. Ever since the like construction started in the house, we've been like renovating things. It's gotten humid all of a sudden. I mean, it has, it is like spring, it's, it's May. So we're, you know, getting into those warmer weather days. Oh, look, another Elta MD. This is a lip balm. This is a, what, what SPF is this? This is, oh, SPF 36. I don't tend to wear lip balms. I know you guys, I mean, I don't tend to wear a lip SPF, which I need to. It's just, it doesn't look good. It looks like, I don't know, it doesn't look good like to have white cast on your lips, but it's probably good. It's probably better than having melanomas or, you know, whatever else that happens with the sun. But I'm gonna keep that because I just recently got that. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna keep these, but this is the dermatology. I usually recommend the dermatology sunscreen. So this is the, is this the tinted or the non-tinted? I can't really see. This is the universal tinted moisturizer. This actually, I like how it looks in just like normal everyday life, but if I'm in like, like under lighting like this, 
the tinted sunscreens just in general, probably even this like Elta MD SPF 41, but the dermatology makes me just look orange and I don't like it. So I've been like, I've been doubling it up or I've been mixing it with the same exact formulation, same exact S SPF of dermatology, but the non-tinted, it sort of like tones down that white cast a little bit and helps me to like match my skin tone. This, the non-tinted bottle broke. So I got this on Amazon. I like, I do like the dermatologies, but this is like maybe like $20 or something like that. And this, look how small, much smaller it is. I feel like this is kind of deceptive. So I don't know if I'll be, well, the thing about the dermatology is it does have nice, which I feel like makes my skin red. I'm going to keep these just so I can get through them, but I don't tend to buy them that frequently. Someone re recommended this to me on my channel. You know who you are. This is the Hera, Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Moisture airlift daily sunscreen this is a chemical sunscreen it is a korean sunscreen i believe is that correct oh yeah made in korea and it's vegan this is a chemical sunscreen high uva protection i believe it has uvenol a plus correct me if i'm wrong uvenol t150 fantastic just better overall stable uva filters compared to what we have in the united states it's a matte sunscreen so you don't look super shiny with this i just it has niacinamide in here so that's that's the other thing niacinamide it's supposed to reduce redness but for me paradoxically, it causes redness. I've been able to isolate like the ingredient, niacinamide, and able, able to just like figure it out that it causes redness. It's not good. So it, but if you want a matte chemical sunscreen and you can tolerate niacinamide, try this Haru Haru Wonder Daily Sunscreen SPF 50. It's also a PA of four plus. I'm gonna keep it just so I can get through it. I'm not throwing out a lot, you guys. I have like three sunscreens that I'm throwing out and they're mainly just empty bottles. So I have the Round Lab Burt birch juice. This is what it's called. This is another Korean sunscreen. This one is actually pretty good. It leaves somewhat of a white cast on here, but this also has those fantastic UVA filters. I got this on, I think Amazon sells it, but like you can get it on Yes Style and Style Vana, I believe. I like it. I'm going to keep, I'm going to just like keep like go through it and maybe order it again before my trip. I also got their, I don't know, it's like a tone up version of their sunscreen and it has a pink hue. Do you see that pink band on the bottom? This is sort of what it comes out as. And I thought it was going to be like a pink hue that would match a pink skin tone or like sort of camouflage redness, but no, it's like really, really casty. It doesn't look good. So I'm gonna, I have a whole bottle of this and I don't wanna throw it away. I don't wanna throw it out. I'm gonna keep it. Oh my gosh, why am I doing this? I might put it on like my hands or maybe my neck or my arms or something. I don't know. And of course the Kanmake, this is a Japanese sunscreen. I like this. This one's super moisturizing. This is the UV mermaid gel clear version. I would not recommend getting the white version because it's super casty. Word of warning, do not put this on a freshly moisturized skin because it will make your face look super white. But if you put it on clean, dry skin, like first thing in the morning, it's super moisturizing. It makes you look fantastic. You're shiny. If you like the shiny look, if you like the sort of like moisturized look, then try the Kanma UV Mermaid Skin Gel or Mermaid Skin Gel UV. I think this is SPF 50 plus PA4 plus. So fantastic UVA filters, fantastic for anti-aging. I recently got this tinted live sunscreen or actually it's like a moisturizer. This is an SPF of Fu. I don't know if I should keep this, but I just bought it. I don't want to waste it. I'm going to keep it. I cannot get through things, you guys. Okay. So currently my keep pile is a large mess of sunscreens that I need to go through, some of which I'm just sniffing as the days go on. And then my get rid of pile is three sunscreens that are again, mainly empty bottles. So I'm making progress. Oh my gosh, I forgot about this day shade by Bayer and Schoen. I think it's like a, it's a European sunscreen. This is a, this is like a, what is it called? Not a, it's kind of like a sunscreen and it is, the redness is astaxanthin, which is a potent antioxidant. It's a carotenoid part of the vitamin A family. It's been shown to reduce wrinkle formation associated with UV and inhibit matrix metalloproteinases, those enzymes, and protect against the sun. But I have not used this because it's super oily and it comes out red and kind of like looks red on your skin. It's made in Germany. I thought it was a, a German. Okay, Hamburg. And has anybody used this? It's it, Oh, it's an oil. Sorry, it's an oil-based sunscreen. Not as, can you see this? So this is, I think, it, I think it's squalane, which is oh, so nourishing for the skin. I love squalane. I'm gonna try this tomorrow. And if I don't like it, I'm going to throw it out. So I'm gonna put this in the center in like the, the maybe pile. <laughs> Let's look at some, shall we? So I got a mess of, got a bunch of here. I have the Timeless Coenzyme Q10s that I love. I also have a retinol that I use occasionally. I get from my, 
or I got it from my dermatologist. It's going to take me a long time because I just got tretinoin as well. And I'm going to kind of alternate the, those twice a week. And that retinol contains bakuchiol, which is a plant derived extract that has been shown to have sort of like retinol analog capabilities. But these have been sort of collecting dust on my shelf. So I'm trying to see if I should get through them or throw them out. I have this azelaic acid. So I was attracted to, the, to this face theory serum. It's like the one and only azelaic acid that I could find that does not have niacinamide, which again causes redness. And I tried this for a little bit in, in conjunction with tretinoin just to see if it reduced any redness while on tretinoin, as well as just like overall like rosacea that I have just like a little bit on my cheeks. And I didn't, I thought that I was like maybe breaking out. It was causing me to break out. Maybe I was using too much or maybe I, it was just, it was just too much with the tretinoin, but I kind of want to pick it back up because azelaic acid can be fantastic for just like fading dark spots, post, post acne, hyperpigmentation or things like that. So, which I think I might have on my skin. I never really had significant acne. I think it just might be rosacea. So I'm going to keep it. I might start incorporating it once to twice a week. I know you're supposed to do it like every single day. You can do it twice a day, but I feel like it's just, my skin's so sensitive. I don't know if I can do it. Here's the Madagascar Centella Asiatica Tella extract. This is like pure Centella. I highly recommended this to someone. And then as the same day that I recommended it to someone, I started like breaking out in like an allergic itch and started getting like redness, like super, super red on my skin. It was itchy. I developed an allergic reaction, I guess, to contact dermatitis to the ampule. And I think I was using just far too much because it doesn't tell you, but I guess with serums, you, you should only use like maybe up to three drops, which I learn the hard way. I don't know if I'll be incorporating this again, but look how much it is. Does anybody want this? Let me know. I did use it, so it might not be like the most sanitary thing to give it to someone else. But that being said, I didn't like touch the touch the dropper or anything. Anyway, maybe I should keep this. What am I doing? I'm not going to use it because Centella is supposed to like also be good for redness, but it's like super gentle. It contains antioxidant, anti-inflammatory compounds. You know what I need to do? I need to come up with like a spreadsheet or like a calendar of like what I'm going to use that day. Tretinoin this night, retinol this night, azelaic acid this night. You know, that's what I probably should do. And the Centella Asiatica, maybe I can just sort of like do one or two drops every morning and just see like how that works out rather than just doing like a whole dropper full, which is what I did. Okay, here's the ordinary as like acid suspension. I found this like super drying and like kind of gritty. I don't know, they're they're like more inexpensive, like even their vitamin C like super gritty. I am not gonna keep this, I don't think. This doesn't have niacinamide in it either, does it? But I've had it for a while and I just don't ever use it. I don't even know if I have used it. Oh, no, I have used it. I got two in a package. And so I went through the first one. I didn't really notice any benefits in terms of, I, and I felt like it was just too dry, like trying to put it on my skin. I much prefer a serum like the face theory. So I'm just gonna stick with this one and maybe get rid of the ordinary because I, I just won't use it. I do like the ordinary moisturizing factors moisturizer though. I highly recommend getting that. Here's another azelaic acid 10% that I only used a couple of times because I felt like it was exacerbating my redness, which probably because, I mean, there's vitamin C in here, but there's also in here. I don't know what it is with every single skincare product having niacinamide. I know that most people can tolerate it. It's great for fighting glycation in the skin. So it has anti, potentially anti-aging properties for in that regard, but it, just doesn't work for me. And I've heard a lot of people say that niacinamide, especially with the concentrations they put it in skincare, is very irritating. So take that for what it's worth. I got this as a gift at Christmas and it's another Centella Asiatica extract. And I got this because it also has other botanical extracts in here that I was reading studies about that showed it had very it had anti-aging properties too, in terms of inhibiting those, those enzymes, collagenase, elastase, that break down collagen and elastin respectively. It has some anti-glycation properties. Madagascoside, how do you say that? With like certain words, like certain medical terms or clinical or like plant-based terms or ingredients, skincare ingredients, I read it all day long and I can write it and everything like that and I can spell it, but I just can't say it out loud. So I'm gonna keep this and maybe since I already have a Centella Asiatica, I might just like try and find a place to donate this skincare item. I have a couple of Depology. I have the Caviar Stick, which I really, really wanna see if I can try and figure out. Maybe I'll like start rolling this on my forehead because this is like an anti-aging product. And this peptide complex, I love. I'm keeping it because I'm trying to get through the Matrixyl 3000s and then I wanna start using this. I use the Matrixyl 3000s at night on my off days when I'm not doing retinol or tretinoin, I just put it on damp skin. So I'm gonna get through that matrixel and then I'm gonna do this peptide complex because I think this also 
has matrixyl in here as well. It has centella asiatica extract, which I can, apparently I, I can do centella asiatica extract when it's like in formulated in like a product, like when it's not just like pure, apparently I can do like sunscreen just cause it's like low concentrations, like the skin 1000 for sunscreen. This also, I think has, does it have camellia sinensis extract in here, which I adore, ceramides, glycerin. I think this also has matrixol, so I don't think I even need a separate matrixol. And I love matrixol. Okay, so moisturizers are, in my opinion, they are fantastic anti-aging products, anti-aging skincare products, just because over time, this has a hard time holding on to water. Trans epidermal water loss is a real, so it's really important that you are moisturizing because that just the skin and makes it look smoother and more youthful. And also it just provides extra hydration for the skin barrier, which is incredibly important for keeping it healthy. So one thing that I have on my shelf is of course, Vaseline. If you watched my seven day challenge vlog where I put va Vaseline on my face every day for seven days, you'll know that I love Vaseline. My grandmother used to put it on her face every single night. She had really great skin, really smooth skin, but I love slugging with this, which is a fairly new term, I believe. And yeah, I'm gonna keep that. Here's, oh, you know, I love this one. This is the Vanny Cream Daily Facial Moisturizer. This has ceramides in here, hyaluronic acid, glycerin. Love this. I use it pretty much almost every single day. And I, I certainly use this every single time I travel because it's so easy to travel with and it's TSA friendly. So why not? I have this Aveeno Baby Daily Moisturizer Lotion, which I haven't really used. I got this because it has dimethicone in here, which I thought would be good for my like skin barrier and helping to trap trap moisture in here. But I think Vaseline, just pure Vaseline is the best way to go because this one, this lotion, this baby moisturizing lotion, lotion while dimethicone is fantastic. And I think it's in the... That La Roche, what is it? That like Sisu Bomb, Sisu, Sisu Bomb. I have that somewhere actually, but it's very drying. Like the lotion is very drying. I don't know if it's the methicone or if they have like zinc oxide in here or something, but it is, it's fairly drying. Although there is oat, oat extract, which is very soothing. I have this tone up cream, vitamin B9 tone up cream. And I don't know what brand it is. Oh, this is by NDP. So this is the, this has some like vitamin, this has a vitamin B9, fermented olive oil, mango seed butter, madocastoside. Again, I've talked about that before on my, on my vlog, but this is a tone up, tone up cream, which I didn't really get, understand when I got this in the mail. This was a PR package, I, I believe. I think I did a video on it. I didn't realize that it wasn't just like a regular moisturizer. It's like a tone up cream, which makes your skin look super white. And I guess you put it under utter makeup or something like that, but I just didn't, never really had a use for this. I'm gonna, let me see if I can try it again. Oh my gosh, I got a little too much out. Let me see if I can put it on my skin. You know, putting things on the backs of your hands isn't, doesn't really give you an accurate representation of things on your face. Like whenever I watch YouTube videos or reviews, skincare reviews, sunscreen reviews, tinted sunscreen reviews, and people are putting sunscreen, like tinted sunscreen on their face, I mean, on their the backs of their hands so they can swatch it and show you, this is what it looks like on the back of my hand. I always do that on the back of my hand and then I put it on my face and it's completely different. It's like so much darker, so much more noticeable. I'm like, yeah, that didn't really work. Like seeing reviews on Amazon and people putting it on the backs of their hands just doesn't work for me. I have this CeraVe Daily Moisturizing Lotion. This, I put it on my face when I was using tretinoin maybe a year ago and it made my skin look like I had a sunburn. I don't know what it is. I've heard other people say the same thing about the CeraVe moisturizers. I don't know if it's like the niacinamide or something that's reacting. It's maybe it's just the overall formulation. I have no idea, but other people who use retinol and tretinoin say that they had the same exact issue. So I'm going to just, this is like a whole bottle. I'm gonna keep this just for like my hands or my body and just like keep that for that. I haven't really been moisturizing my body after I get in the shower. I need to start doing that. Okay, I'm not sure if this video was super <laughs> successful or not just because i didn't really get rid of a lot the keep pile is overflowing still some of these products i i plan on using one product i want to give away and maybe a donate and the other products I need to find a place in my routine. So do you think I should get rid of some of these items? Let me know which items you think I should just like, you know, get rid of. They aren't worth my time. They aren't, you know, worth my, like they aren't valuable or in, in, in an anti-aging skincare 
routine, let me know. But thank you for joining me and thank you for helping me and just keeping me company while I try to like sort things out. I appreciate it because I really needed to get this cleaned up. If you like this video, please hit that like button down below. It really helps out my channel a lot and I appreciate it. And if you want to, definitely subscribe down below for more anti-aging skincare, nutrition, vlog videos. I come up with them every single day, pretty much every single day, including short videos. So I would love to share this space with you. I'd love to have you here. And in the meantime, I hope you have a good one. See you in the next video. Bye.